What's going on everybody, it's Sean here, back today with another installment of my Cop or Drop series. And in today's video, I'll be giving you guys my opinion on some of the sneaker releases for the first two weeks of April. Kicking things off on April 1st, Adidas is dropping two colorways of the Ultra Boost DNA. With Adidas really pushing the Superstar model because of course this is an anniversary year, we're going to see two Ultra Boost releases that are heavily influenced by the Adidas Superstar. Instead of your traditional mesh, the upper of these Ultra Boosts are covered in leather, which is a very interesting and very different look. And the price point reflects that with the price of 200 US dollars, which is approximately $280 here in Canada. Personally, I find the look a little bit strange. When I think Ultra Boost, I think more performance oriented or at the least a shoe with mesh. So seeing it built up more like a traditional sneaker is a little bit strange. So for me, both colorways are gonna be a pass. Next up, we have a handful of SB Dunks that are set to release this month. Though there's no specific release date on these dunks, I think they're going to be slowly trickling in through the first half of April. So let's kick things off first with the SB Dunk Low in the Blue Fury color. These dunks aren't supposed to be limited edition, I believe they are a GR type of dunk. They retail for 100 US dollars, which is a very affordable option, and that translates to about 140 Canadian. The colorway of this shoe reminds me of the Charlotte Hornets, and I think it'll be a great head turner sort of option, especially in the summer season. For me, this pair is definitely a cop. Next up, also releasing sometime in April, we have the SB Dunk Low in the Muslin and Black colorway. This color scheme is pretty unique, it's not personally my favorite, but honestly it's not bad either. It sort of has a bit more of a sophisticated look to it, so I'll probably try to get them, but if I take an L, it's not the end of the world. So I guess it's more of a game time decision. Next up, our third SB Dunk on the list is actually an SB Dunk Mid, and if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I don't love the SB Dunk Mid silhouette, and I think a lot of people share that same sentiment as well. With that said though, this colorway has me a bit intrigued, especially because I grew up in the era where Ken Griffey Jr. was that baseball idol, and I used to pretend to be him wearing my hat backwards, pretending I was in the home run derby. So you can see these dunks have that Seattle Mariners color scheme, and it's another shoe I would love to review, but whether I end up keeping it or not, that's another discussion. So again, this is another shoe that I'm kind of on the fence on. Next up, dropping on April 3rd, we have the Stussy collaboration with Nike on the Air Zoom Spirit on Cage 2 in two different colorways. So a few days ago, we saw a Stussy online release, but April 3rd, I believe, is the worldwide release of these two colorways. There's going to be a Fossil pair and a Pure Platinum and Black pair. And I don't know about you guys, but my honest opinion is I really don't like this silhouette. There's something about it that just looks really strange, almost like skeleton-like. And it doesn't matter what collaboration it is, it doesn't matter the colorway or all the hype that surrounds it. For me, this is a definite no. And I know it's rare that I have such a negative stance on a shoe, but for some reason, this one is one I just really don't like. For those of you guys who are interested in this pair, hopefully it's not too difficult to get. And I know the black and pure platinum probably is gonna be the easier of the two. So with that said, good luck for you guys who are copying, but for me, this is gonna be a straight pass. Set to drop on April 8th, we have the Air Jordan 7 Retro in the Hair 2.0 colorway. The original Hair or the Hair 1.0 is one of the original colorways of the Air Jordan 7. This month though, we're going to see the 2.0 adaptation of the shoe, which takes the Bugs Bunny or Rabbit inspiration to the next level. As you can see, the entire upper of the shoe is covered in this rabbit-like hair, and because of this premium finish, the price point reflects that being $250 US dollars or $330 Canadian dollars. To me, this is just ridiculously high, and the shoe in itself is a bit comical. I personally prefer the look of the Hair Jordan 6, which is also set to drop later on in the month. Don't get me wrong though, this is a very unique looking sneaker, so if you're able to rock these and pull them off, then more power to you. It's just for me, I don't love the Jordan 7 to begin with. The look of the shoe is a little bit too crazy, so it's gonna be a drop. Next up, what was originally slated to drop on April 4th, which I believe has been pushed to April 11th, we have the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG in the Court Purple 2.0 colorway. So I posted my early review on this shoe a few days ago, so if you guys haven't seen that, I'll add the link down below. These Court Purple 2.0s follows the same color blocking style as the Chicago Jordan 1, but of course it replaces the signature red with purple. This is a very, very clean looking sneaker. Jordan 1s are ultra versatile, and of course the popularity and hype on Jordan 1s is still at a super high level. With that said, I already have my pair, I'm gonna keep my pair, and I imagine a lot of you guys are planning to try to copy these as well. So, goes without saying, this one is a definite cop. Set to drop on April 11th, Adidas is supposedly releasing the Yeezy 700 V3 in the Alva colorway. The Yeezy 700 V3, to put it honestly, is a very interesting silhouette, and in my opinion, it's a significant departure from the V1 and the V2. Most notably, it's missing Adidas Boost technology, which makes it the least comfortable version between the three 700s. With that said though, I'm not a huge fan of triple black, and I feel like it hides the details of the 700 V3 silhouette. 
So that plus the fact that it's just not as comfortable as the other two models, for me, this is gonna be a drop. Also set to drop on April 11th, though the release dates on all these shoes are kind of unclear. But as of now, tentatively, we have the Air Jordan 6 Retro in the Defining Moments Package or DMP colorway. The original DMP 6s released alongside an Air Jordan 11 back in 2006. This was one of the most highly coveted packs from Jordan brand of all time. And in fact, back in the day before I sold a bunch of my shoes to buy my condo, I had two of these packs. The DMP6 is a very clean looking shoe. The majority of it is black and then we have these hits of metallic gold. And I'm not even a huge fan of the Jordan 6, but because of nostalgia and the fact that it's a very nice looking sneaker, for both those reasons, it's gonna be a cop. Honestly guys, when I was making this list for you, there are so many different fluctuations and variations in the release dates. With the whole COVID-19 or coronavirus crisis going on right now, I feel like a lot of shoes are gonna be postponed until things get a little bit better. So hopefully in the next few weeks, the release dates get firmed up a bit. But until then, I feel like a lot of this is still a guessing game. And all these shoes that I just mentioned might even get pushed back to later on. So anyways, let me know in the comment section down below of all these shoes that I listed, which one is gonna be a cop for you, or on the other hand, a drop. If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Give me a follow on Instagram at sgo8. Check out my Twitter at sean.go and visit my website at seango.ca. Hopefully you guys enjoy this segment of Cop or Drop. And until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one.